Hello everyone, this is teacher Regil. This video addresses the competency Illustrate Polynomial Functions. A polynomial function is a mathematical expression defined as p of x equals a sub n times x to the power of n and so on and so forth plus a sub zero where n is a non-negative integer. If you can recall, this red part here was used to define polynomials. With the presence of p of x equals, it makes it a polynomial function. Don't panic if you see this notation here because this just means that this a sub n is the coefficient of our leading term. And then we have here a sub n minus 1 is the coefficient of our second term. a sub n minus 2 is the coefficient of our third term and so on. And this a sub 0 represents our constant. And the exponent also from the highest exponent n, then we have the next exponent is n minus 1, so 1 degree lower, and then the next exponent is n minus 2, okay, and so on and so forth. So it is easy to understand that if we have uh, to study an example. So we have here f of x equals 5x cubed plus x squared minus 2x plus 3. So notice here the exponent Okay, the highest exponent is 3, then next is 2, next is 1, and then the last one is constant. So, this 5 here is our a sub n, the leading coefficient. Then a sub n minus 1 here is our next uh, coefficient. Then we have negative 2 here is our uh, next uh, coefficient and such that the last should be our constant. Now, let us just remember that if we have polynomial function, the variable x should not have negative exponent, should not have fractional exponent, should not be on the denominator, and should not be radical. Okay. These are the next terminologies that we need to learn. Degree, leading term, and leading coefficient. So what do you mean by degree? I have here uh, two polynomials, one and two. We are going to find the degree. So what's the degree of this first polynomial? So degree is just the highest exponent, which is five. How about the leading term? Leading term is the term that has the highest exponent. In this case, it's negative 6x to the power of 5. How about leading coefficient? It's just the coefficient of the term with the highest exponent. So in this case, it's negative 6. So polynomial number 2. So what's the degree? Highest exponent here is 4. And then the leading term, the term with the highest exponent, 2x to the power of 4. Leading coefficient, the coefficient of the term with the highest exponent, that's 2. Now the next thing that we are going to learn here is identifying functions as even or odd. So a function f is said to be even function if for every x in the domain f of x equals f of negative x meaning to say if we are going to substitute our x's all the x's we have with a negative x we still get the same answer okay we have here a question is f of x equals 2x to the power of 4 minus 2x squared plus 5 an even function? 
let's try substituting all the excess we have by negative x. Okay, f of negative x equals 2. Then we have here negative x to the power of 4, then minus 2 times negative x again to the power of 2 plus 5. So we will simplify. Okay, we have 2x to the power of 4 minus 2x squared plus 5. If you notice here, we get the same answer. So this means this function here, okay, is an even function. And as a matter of fact, if you are going to look at our exponents, we have exponent uh, 4 here and exponent 2. They are even exponents. A function f is said to be odd function if for every x in the domain, f of negative x equals negative f of x. Meaning to say, if we substitute all our x's with negative x, so that will still be equal to when you change all the signs of our function. We have a question here. Is f of x equals x to the power of 5 minus 3x cubed plus 6x an odd function? Let's try substituting all our x's with negative x. So we have here f of negative x equals negative x to the power of 5 minus 3 times negative x to the power of 3 plus 6 times negative x. So this is what we get. Negative x to the power of 5 plus 3x cubed minus 6x. Then we will try changing the signs okay, of the terms here. So we multiply by a negative number. Notice here that we have negative x to the power of 5 plus 3x to the power of 3 minus 6x. And these two polynomials are equal. So meaning to say this function f of x equals x to the power of 5 minus 3x cubed plus 6x is an odd function. And as a matter of fact, if you are going to look at our exponents, we have exponent 5, exponent 3, and exponent 1. They are odd numbers. Why do we need to identify functions as even or odd? Because if our uh, function is even, okay, the graph is symmetric about the y-axis. We have here example, okay, y equals x squared. This is an even function. So notice here that this part on the right, okay, is symmetric, okay, to the one we have on the left symmetric about the y-axis and for odd functions example we have y equals x to the power of 3 okay this is the graph notice here that this part on quadrant 1 is symmetric to this part on quadrant 3 about the origin so that's one of the characteristics of uh, an odd function. The next thing we are going to learn here is evaluating polynomials. Okay, example, let p of x be equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. So find p of negative 2. So this negative 2 is our domain and our input. And we are going to plug this in to all the excess we have here. So let's do that. P of negative 2, it's negative 2 to the power of 3, plus 2 times negative 2 to the power of 2, minus 3 times negative 2, plus 5. Okay, simplifying, we have this. And our answer here is 11. And this 11 is what we call the range or the output. Let's do another example. Let p of x equals 3x squared minus 5x minus 4. Then find p of 3. So meaning to say 
this three is our domain, our input. Plug this in to all the access we have on our polynomial. Okay, P of three equals three times three to the power of two minus five times three minus four. So simplifying, we have three times three squared is 27. Then minus five times three is minus 15, then minus four. And we have here, our answer is eight. And this A is what we call the range and or our output. I prepared here three items for you to practice. Okay, you can pause the video and try working on these three items. If you are not ready, I can show you the answer. For item number one, the answer is 63. I have here the details of the solution. Item number two, the answer is 37. And for item number three, the answer is negative six. Did you get all the items right? I hope you did. Thanks for watching guys. This is Teacher Regil. Keep safe.